Appreciate the Lord. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. I want to give you an opportunity to say hi to two or three people. Tell them that they are blessed. Tell them that they look beautiful. Amen. Want to do a very simple song? It says, Uba Gile, Uba Gile, Uba Gile, Mona Wakiala, Uba Gile, Uba Gile, Uba Gile, Mona Wakiala. Let me hear you. Uba Gile, you sound amazing. Ay, ay, ay. You can clap your hands. Say who bagile?
mwana wa Mungu unaweza 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 mwana wa Mungu come on give Jesus a mighty hand clap in this place yeah. all right we are not done yet tunaangojea jamii meanwhile we can just smile and marvel at the joy of the lord amen hallelujah mwambie yesu mwambie mwambie yesu mwambie anaweza yote yesu mwambie atakushindia yesu hey mwambie
And in the presence of the Lord, I just want you to give your heart to God today, this morning. And I know he tells us that whenever we call upon his name, that he is there with us. And he makes a way upon his men. And he liberates men from captivity. And he delivers men from the world of wickedness. And from the world of poverty. And from the world of wickedness. And he's going to liberate us from all the bad things of our lives. And all the stubbornness that we are having. All the burdens that we are having into our lives. So I just want you, wherever you are in that atmosphere of worship, I just want you to talk to God this hour, this morning, uh, this second, because he is not a man that he go lie to ourselves. That is not a man that he go lie to us. And in this season, whether we want to know him more, and we are destined for our purpose, oh God. And Jesus, I want us to say, as we sing, he's a mighty man of war. And I just want you to be open in your mouth. And I just want you to create an awareness in this atmosphere as we enter into the realms of the spirit and in the altars of that, oh God, we might see here, that we might see this light. We might see this light in this city because he dwells in heavens, because he dwells in clean hands, oh God. of Judah we bow down and worship you sing mighty man of war mighty man of war he's a lion of Judah lion of Judah so we are bowing down before his presence this morning and we are worshiping his name because there is no like him sing mighty man of war your battles around because he is there with you and at this morning i just want you to sing sing mighty man of war lion of children so we are bowing down before your praise and we are worshiping you god into the spiritual realms right now. 
Lord, we welcome you to this place, oh God. Lord, we welcome you to our harvest, Almighty God. Let this season be a season of uncommon harvest. Let there be known into the entire land that you are a God of wonders. Let there be known that you are a promise keeper. Let there be known that you are a rainmaker. Let the witches of the land testify to these. Let our country help us, oh God. Yahweh, there is none like you, oh God. Yahweh, there is none like you, oh God. Lord, I bless you, oh Jesus. Lord, I want to walk to your path, oh God. May you open our inner eyes. May you open our inner eyes, oh God. Lord, may you make us our sons, oh God. Make us your sons, oh Jesus. Eh, to no kuinu abo ye enzi. Eh, to no kuabulu fado wa mani. Eh, akuna kama wewe Jehovah. Una tutoto kwa ye shimo la utelezi. Eh, Jesus, oh God. Lord, we don't want to be stuck in this darkness. Oh God, forgive us, oh Jesus. Lord, there is none like you, oh God. Lord, we are tired of suffering in this sickness. Lord, we are tired of suffering in this poverty. We are tired of suffering in this burden, Almighty God. Lord, may you liberate us from this burden. Lord, these goods are becoming too much, oh God. Lord, we need to free our hearts, oh God. Lord, may you sanctify us, Almighty God. Lord, may you strengthen our spirit in this hour. Lord, may you strengthen our sea, oh God. Lord, may you strengthen our heads, Almighty God. Oh Jesus, oh Jesus, Lord, as Daniel is praying, praying facing Jerusalem, we are praying facing the heavens, oh God, this morning, oh God. Thank you, God, thank you, Jesus. Lord, 
we are grateful for the gift of life this morning. We are grateful for your goodness and your faithfulness in our lives, Lord. This far, Lord, you have been Ebenezer. You have been Ebenezer to us as day star, oh God. You have been Ebenezer to us as a nation of Kenya, oh Lord. And so, Father, we come to lift up an offering of praise of glory and of honor to your holy name. Lord, we want to thank you. We want to thank you for your goodness in our lives, Lord. Thank you for the way you have continued to sustain us and you have continued to keep us, dear Lord. From this semester, dear Lord, from when it started up to now, Lord, you have been Jehovah. You have been Jehovah Jireh providing for our every need, dear Lord. You have been the Lord God, our peace. You have been our banner. You have been our protector, oh God. And Father, we just want to thank you. We want to praise your holy name. We want to worship you once more, dear Lord. Like we have many times here, oh Lord. We want to say that, God, you are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our honor. Lord, we lift up, dear Heavenly Father, our institution before you, oh God. Thank you for Daystar, oh God. And thank you for all the people who, dear God, you have put to work in this place oh god thank you for the daystar company oh god thank you for the daystar council oh god thank you dear lord for the management led by our vice chancellor oh god thank you for the senate and for the staff of daystar oh god thank you for our students dear lord thank you that father this far you have taken care of us you have provided for us dear lord you have helped us as an institution to progress in so many ways oh god and father we pray that you will continue to reign over the affairs of this institution oh god that father you shall meet each and every need of every student oh god that father as they continue to trust in you dear lord you are coming through for them dear lord those who are trusting for you for finances oh god that lord you are providing in a mighty way oh god for the many things we are trusting you in this dear lord for the projects that need financing oh god we are trusting that lord you will provide and we thank you that you have provided this far oh god father continue to sustain us and to help us dear lord as an institution as individuals as families represented here dear lord i speak your blessing upon on their lives i speak your peace upon their lives dear lord for those who are not feeling well father i pray for your healing upon them dear lord that father you will keep them well and you will sustain them because you are jehovah rafa lord in a special way we want to raise our nation before you father we raise our country before you lord you see what is happening in our country and Lord, unless you come through for us, dear Lord, we have no hope. Lord, we are desperate. We are desperate for a move of God in this country, Lord. And today, Lord, we plead the blood of Jesus over this country, O oh God. Over the affairs of this country, Lord, we are pleading, dear Lord, that you will come through for our nation. Blessed is the nation whose God is Lord. And Lord, we declare Kenya belongs to you, O oh God. Kenya does not belong to the enemy. It belongs to you, God. Lord, you see what is happening in our nation. And Lord, we are crying. We are crying that, Lord, you will come through for our nation in a mighty way, O oh God. Lord God, today we have said that you are the man God of war, the commander of the heaven's army. Jehovah Sabaoth is your name, O oh God. Jehovah El Gibo, we are calling on you. We are calling on you, dear Lord, to fight for this nation, O oh God. That the enemy will not plunder our country, O oh God. That our country will not go to the dogs in the name of Jesus. That, Lord, this country shall be established and it shall be established in you, O oh God, because you are the God of this nation. And so, Lord, whatever is happening out there today, we are proclaiming you, dear God, to be present, dear Lord, in every corner of this country. Lord, we are praying for a hedge of protection, a hedge of fire, the blood of Christ that was shed, dear Lord. May it be enough for this country, O oh God. The blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel, O oh God. May it speak for this nation, O oh God. Let there be no more blood shed dear lord 
we are tired of the chaos we are tired of the plunder oh god and father we are praying that you will bring deliverance and healing to this nation we want a country where our young people can prosper, oh God. Where they can have jobs, where they can live in health and in security, oh God. And that is what we are pleading for this morning, oh God. So Father, we pray that you reign. That you reign in our country, oh Lord, reign. And come and do only what you can do. What our politicians are not able to do, what our, our citizens are not able to do, God come come and intervene in this nation like you fought many battles in the bible we trust in you you who was the same yesterday today and forevermore we are praying we are praying dear heavenly father and calling on you dear god to reign on this country dear lord because lord if you do not do it lord we shall all perish and god we don't want to perish we are the people called by your name you tell us in your word if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways then god you promise that you will hear from heaven that you will answer our prayers and our cries dear god and that you will come and heal our land and so lord today we pray heal our land heal our land kenya oh god heal all of us dear lord in ways that we could be hurting dear lord we are praying that you will heal us oh the healing balm of gilead move in this place move in this country lord move in this institution in jesus name we pray amen Praise the Lord, Daystar. Praise the Lord once again. Yes, my name is Emmanuel Mukoya. Kindly just greet your neighbor. Make them feel at home. Just tell them, welcome to chapel. Hallelujah. Yes, at this juncture, I'd like to... I've been given the honor to invite Infinite Mass. Makofia Infinite Mass, Tafadhali. For those, aha. Uh, they are very, very popular. Infinite Mass is a serve team under DCF that deals with dance. It's a dance ministry. Karibu Nisana.
appreciate Infinite Mass once again. Thank you so much. There's something for everyone here. And we are encouraging the men who can dance eh, to join Infinite Mass and keep Jeff company as we raise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I bring you today's announcements. Welcome to chapel. It's so good to see each one of you. You're blessed. Amen. Just because you came. Tomorrow, we invite you for midweek recharge. Happens at the ICT Theater from 8 p.m. to 9.15. It's a great place where we gather to worship midweek and just glorify the Lord, share testimonies, interact. And, um, you know, it's a beautiful space of refreshment. This Sunday, we still have our service right here at the amphitheater from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. So it would be great um, to see you this coming Sunday. Bible study and discipleship groups are ongoing. And you know soon Bible study will come to an end, yeah? And exams will begin. So ask your neighbor, has been your experience so far at Bible study? Ask them, ask them, has it, do they even have a group? Huh? We start there. How is your group doing? They must have something to tell you about the experience so far. Yes, the feedback that is always coming is amazing. So ensure that you continue to um, do life with your Bible study group every Thursday from 8 um, a, um, 8.30 a.m. DCF, the Daystar Christian Fellowship, is excited to express our sincere gratitude to each one and every one of you who took part in our hike this weekend. We were about 100 students and we hiked the Ngong Hills to Hill, Hill 7, to Hill 7, mm -hmm. some made it to Hill 5 and to Hill 7, and we had a good time. It was such a, a, a great uh, time of hiking, 12 kilometer stretch of the seven incredible peaks. So thank you so much for signing up and thank you so much for participating. Um, in that hike as well. DITA, the Data Information and Technology Association, presents Academia. Academia is an app that has been crafted uh, by students for students that will help us in uh, simplifying class organization and scheduling. Usiamke asubu lisa u class. Usiamke asubu unoliza exam room iko happy and your exam imeisha. Yeah? So plug into this app and uh, simplify your life. Could we queue in the video? Okay. Introducing Academia, the ultimate app to streamline the academic life of a student at this university. Designed by students for students. Academia brings your school portal features right to your fingertips, faster and easier than ever before. With Academia, you can check your semester timetable, track your daily and semester progress with ease, stay on top of your exam schedule, and many more. Customize the app to suit your style and enjoy a smooth, user-friendly experience. Download Academia today and experience the full spectrum. The full spe spectrum. It could be spectrum of the app. But you have seen the main details, right? So, yeah. Um, how do we download the app, Joe? Oh, there's a QR code. Yes, but you could come to, you could just walk to the data labs um, and find help from them. Finally, dear friends, Ephesians 3.20 reminds us that our God is able to do more than that which we imagine. Therefore, um, in the rest of the week, dedicate everything uh, to God, trusting that he is able to do more than that which we imagine. Amen. And this morning, we have also sung that he is an able God. I'd like to invite uh, Wafula to bring us the Bible reading as, an, as, an, as I invite him. I remind you that DCF loves you and Chaplaincy loves you as well. Let's appreciate our fuller waffles. Call them waffles. <laughs> Good morning and praise the Lord. My name is Moses Wafula. I, come, I work in the ICT department. I've seen Lois and Halim. They can just wave. There she is. So today's scripture reading comes from uh, Ephesians chapter uh, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1 to 16. And I will request that we be on our feet standing as we read the word of God. I'll use the New Living Translation. New Living Translation. Therefore, I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling 
for you have been called by God. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's fault because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. For there is no for there is one body and one spirit, just as you have been called to one glorious hope of the future. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all, in all and living through all. However, he has given each one of us a special gift through the uh, generosity of Christ. That is why the scripture says, when he ascended to heights, he led a crowd of, cap of captives and gave gift to his people. Notice that I say he ascended. This clearly means that Christ also descended to our lowly world. And, he, and the same one who descended is the one who ascended higher than all the heavens so that he might fill the entire universe with himself. Now, these are the gifts Christ gave to the church, the apostle, the prophets, the evangelist, and the pastors, and the teachers. There is responsibility to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church. The body of Christ, this, is, this will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standards of Christ. Then we'll no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in the love, grown in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other part grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and in full of love. And that's the word of God. You can sit. Thank you. Amen. Let's appreciate Brother Wafula. God bless you. Good morning, Daystar. The Lord is good. And all the time. And that is his nature. Amen. And can I tell you, you're the testimony that gets better day by day. Amen. A round of applause for our VC who is in the house. We acknowledge you, sir. Amen. Thank you. My name is Kimashia. For those who have not met me, I am the deputy chaplain, and I know we will meet more. To bring us God's word this morning is Reverend Peter Nzimbi, who is uh, joined uh, by his family, uh, the wife, Loreen, and the two sons, Toda and Rason. And kindly, I would request them to just stand and wave to the community. Amen. Uh, good. <laughs> Reverend Zimbi serves as the curate at ACK St. Francis Karen. And I just want to pray for him, even as he brings the word of God to us. Amen. Let's bow for prayer. Father, we thank you for your word. Your word is living, active, and sharper than any double-edged sword. And Lord, we open up our hearts, our minds, and our spirits just to hear from you. We pray that you may use your servant to speak to us, even as you also minister to him. We thank you, and we honor you. These are prayer of faith with thanksgiving, in Jesus' name. Amen. Welcome. Thank you so much. Great. Let's appreciate him. I don't know his name. <laughs> Thank you, Kimasha. Yeah, he, he seemed to have uh, so many details about me, and I have very little detail about him, um, but I'm glad to be here. Good morning, Desta. And praise the Lord. Uh, my name is Peter, as you've heard, came with Loreen, Toda, and Rason. Uh, we live in Siokimau, and uh, we serve in Karen. And today, because there was Mandamano, we said we are coming, all of us together, because we are en route to Kitui, uh, because I am on leave. And we thank God for this opportunity to minister while on leave, and we praise the Lord. Uh, Reverend Weche is a good friend and a dear uh, brother, 
And so uh, we are glad to be here. They went to school, primary school with my wife. So I, I, I have to be, I have to, I have to keep my friends close and my enemies closer anyway. <laughs> There's no story <laughs> with that, but uh, <laughs> you, can, you can take it the way you'd want anyway. <laughs> So today, if you have your Bibles, let's keep them open to the book of Ephesians chapter 4. The book of Ephesians chapter 4. I'm briefed that we are looking at destined for purpose, new life for new people. And today, particularly focusing on serving together, growing together. The book of Ephesians is a classic discipleship book that spells out the future or the true position of God's new people. If you read the book of Acts chapter 17, chapter 18, and chapter 19, specifically Acts chapter 19, you will see the beginning of the church in Ephesus. And Paul has gone in, has preached a word, uh, the gospel basically, a word of transformation. Uh, people have begun being transformed, but there is a rebellion because he has introduced the true God and has caused a disruption in that city. It's a city that possibly was in Cumberland. If you read Acts chapter 19. Because there's a lot of divination and a lot of witchcraft happening in there. <laughs> I'm a Kamba, so I can say that. But nonetheless, the word of God comes in, brings transformation, and a new people, the people of God, arise. And this new people of God, the church, in every single chapter of the book of Ephesians, and particularly, specifically, if you look keenly at the 10th or 11th verse of every chapter in the book of Ephesians, you will hear Paul reminding the believers to remain in Christ, to remain in him, to remain in Christ. The Christ who saves them, the Christ who shapes them, the Christ who gathers them, the Christ who gifts them and helps them to walk in him, but particularly in chapter 6, the Christ who strengthens them for victory. Today, as we focus on serving together and growing together, uh, we are in chapter 4, the fourth chapter, in which Paul calls us to walk in the giftings of Christ Jesus for the growth of the body of Christ the church. I forgot my salmon illustration, and my salmon illustration was simply this, a bottle of Coca-Cola, which is a unit, or a bottle of Sprite, or Fanta, which is a unit, and if that was to be shaken, shaken thoroughly, and opened right here, what would happen? It would splatter on everyone, possibly each and every person, even the farthest one of us. And that's exactly the picture that Paul is painting in chapter 4 of the book of Ephesians. He is particularly saying in verse 7 that God in Christ Jesus is splattering gifts to every single one in the body of of Christ, the church. Have a look down at verse 7. But grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. But before he actually splatters the gift, he is basically saying, church, you must live in love. You must also be one in accord you must live in unity. But beyond the love and the unity, I'm calling out 
the diversity in each and every one of you by splattering and giving and according gifts. Everyone that is saved by the one God, the Father of all, called into the one body through the one spirit who unites us through the one Lord in the one faith, one hope, one baptism that is in Christ Jesus who has called us into community. This community is one of gifted people. Turn to your neighbor and tell them you are gifted. If you belong to that community, each and every one of us has a gift. Every one of us has a gift. And this gift has been given by the one Lord in charge of this one community, the community of God. Every one of us has a gift from the one Lord, Jesus Christ. Everyone. Just think about it. Every one of us. It might be dancing. It might be preaching. It might be just sitting right there and smiling. It's a gift. Because you probably are a work of encouragement to the many people that stand here. It might be playing of instruments. It might be one or another. One of the beautiful things that I enjoyed while in primary school, and actually not pr primary school, yes, and in high school and in university was this. The joy of just opening scripture and having an understanding and a clarity to lead Bible study. I never made it to be the Bible study coordinator in all those spheres, I was the understudy to someone. But I loved this opening scripture. To the point that by the time I was giving my life to Jesus and surrendering or receiving the grace of God at work in my life, I had actually led six young boys to Christ through scripture. Through scripture. Just having a clear understanding of the word of God. And it's so simple. It's so simple to understand God's word. But I don't think that simplicity just comes. It's a gift of God. And some of us have been given that gift. So don't neglect the Bible study. Go in and sit in. Your contribution might be the very ministry that is needed for someone who came in to hear from God. Don't neglect it. The dancing here is amazing. Some of you can move. My wife told me she's joining the dance crew. Uh, me and the boys are not sure. <laughs> but we will converse that before we get to Kitui. We will determine whether she needs to. Every one of us is gifted. Turn to your neighbor and tell them you are gifted. And this gifting is not from anyone else. But it is from Christ, the head of the family and the community. And notice that as he continues to speak about love, unity, in this one body, he speaks clearly of this diversity. And he brings out the diversity as we understand it. And we have constantly had probably preaching about this diversity. And I would want you to take note of verse 11. The most notable gifts recorded in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 are word gifts. They are word gifts. The prophet speaks. The apostle uses words. The evangelist, I, I wrote here, Many words, <laughs> many words. The evangelist uses many words. The shepherd, care words. The teacher, learning or teaching words. And these gifts, please note, have a purpose. And their purpose is one, to grow the body of Christ, to equip the saint for the work of ministry, 
for building up the body of Christ. So, turn to your neighbor and tell them you have a gift. Turn to the other one and tell them it is for my growth. It is for my growth. It is for my growth. So every one of us has been given a gift, but that gift is to be used for the growing of the body of Christ. Notice that it says, until we all attain to the unity of the faith, until we attain the knowledge of the, of the Son of God, until we become mature, attain the fullness of the measure of God. Your gift is not for you and for me to show off and to come and stand here and say that I understand the Bible better. It is for the body of Christ. It is for me to use it to grow the body of Christ. I just whispered to Reverend Weche and told him, I've been doing Bible study in our church at St. Francis with not more than six people, a church of 1,300, with most of them following online. Um, we are not sure whether they follow online. Am I, you know, online can really trick you. They probably might click and you say you have a hundred people following. The IT guy who read maybe can tell us more anyway. <clears throat> but I've been doing it for the last two years. Consistently for one hour every Saturday. And what are we looking at? Bible books and trying to understand. It is for the growth and the body of Christ. And I'll tell you in two years... It's only a few Saturdays ago that I came joyful and loving and thanking the Lord and told my wife, you know what? I think these six guys now have started understanding the word of God because they came prepared for the first time in two years. They came prepared. They had read before. <laughs> the gifts that we have are for the growth and the development of the body of Christ. God's gifts in Christ Jesus to every member of the body of Christ are for growing the believer for, notice, a lifetime. There is a time frame that has been put in that scripture. These gifts have a purpose and this purpose is for a lifetime. Secondly, God's gift in Christ Jesus to every member of the body of Christ are for Christian stability, steadfastness in faith. You can confirm that in verses 14. Whenever we see Christians not growing or unstable in their faith, being carried or swayed by every wind of doctrine, then someone somewhere is not using their Christian given or their Christ given gift. Whenever we see trouble in the church, whenever we see probably trouble within Christendom, then there is probably someone somewhere who has not used their Christ given gift. How are we to use these gifts that Christ has given? Speaking the truth in love. It was so amazing to see this. That love begins that chapter in chapter 4. And love ends that portion of scripture in verse 16. And this actually is a principle that we use in um, Bible exposition. Which is called the book end principle. Whenever you see a concept that begins uh, at the very beginning and is at a point in time in the passage of scripture, it closes the whole understanding of what teaching is there. So interesting that love circles back from verse 1 to verse 16. How are we to use these gifts? And Paul says this, makes a statement there, speak the truth in love. I don't know how this speaking the truth in love 
has been translated or can be translated here in this Daystar community. But for me, my simple understanding that his need to be expressive through words and actions, there is need for us to, as believers, to walk with sincerity, to walk with openness, to walk in a sense of humility, to walk with a sense of gentleness, patience, being with one another and loving one another, always eager to maintain the unity and the oneness through a bond of peace. It is expressing your Christian truth and that which you know that Christ is doing in your life, expressing it, not only through what you say and how I say it, but actually living it out and walking out and living out and walking in the truth of Christ accomplished in my life. I don't know whether you have a piece of paper with you or somewhere where you can write. And if you can be able to remember this, even if it's in your note on your phone, I want you to write this down. My Christ-given gift is dash. My Christ-given gift is dash. I didn't want to feel it for you. I want you to feel it for you, for yourself. Out of a place of prayer, out of a place of introspection, it might be one, it may be numerous, there may be many, but write down, my Christ-given gift is dash. And continue by saying, and I will use it to serve others for their growth through Christ who strengthens me. And in finishing, as he talks and emphasizes on the love, the unity, diversity, and the growth that ought to be experienced in the body of Christ, as we remain in Christ, Paul finishes that section by saying this, from him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, it grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ is a unit that works in diversity and is mutually dependent for growth and development. I need you. You need me. Christ needs us so that his body, the church, may grow from strength to strength, from glory to glory, until it attains the knowledge of the Son of God, the maturity, the fullness of the measure of God. If you haven't heard anything, please hear this. God's new society and God's new community in Ephesus is to display love, is to display a sense of oneness, and not a oneness out of the fact that we are black, out of the fact that we are in Desta, but a unity that is drawn from the one Lord, one hope, one faith, one baptism, and the one hope that we have in Christ Jesus. God's new society is to display love, unity, but also diversity, us being able to use the very gifts that Christ has put in us, not for ourselves, but for the growth and development of the body of Christ. Diversity, so that we all can grow and be mature. Amen. We don't train them for the job market. We train them to create the job market. Thank you, Peter. This Let's clap for him again. This is in our training ethos. 
While you think about that, let's face it. What really defines okay, uh, a great university? It's students, then, quality faculty, commitment to research and, and advancement in academia. This is Daystar University. Excellence, transformation and servant leadership. May intake <laughs> ongoing. <laughs> Guys, you heard that. I look young, so... Mr. Masiga, I look young. You know, once the vice chancellor pronounces himself, the matter is settled. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I really did not anticipate to say something, but uh, my heart just told me uh, we share one or two things. Allow me on your behalf to thank uh, Reverend Peter Nzimbi. I don't know whether you are the Nzimbi. The other one is uh, a Methodist. The Nzimbi, eh? Anglican. Okay. Same. Okay. I met him at Nairobi Primary not so long ago for a prize giving day, one of those days. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy. And Karibu Sana uh, with the family. And thank you for the message. Uh, where are those girls who are dancing here? Wherever they are, please stand up. Mukwabi, uh, Metro, just come. I know you've put on. Yeah. Um, For me, uh, just, just come here. Uh, Peter, for me, the gift that God has given me is uh, uh, always to encourage the human heart. I, I find it uh, a very important one. Uh, but there was a gentleman. Where is he? <laughs> As a gentleman, uh, yeah. so you can turn this way. I just want to turn and face me. I just want to thank you and bless you and uh, continue doing what you're doing. It's amazing. You know, I, and now I regret so much, uh, Rev. Peter. I regret so much because I didn't, I don't think I used my energy well when I was young. <laughs> and this, the movements these people are making, uh, it's unbelievable. Although I was, maybe I was too much in sports, you know, rugby, basketball, and all that. But uh, please use that gift. So was Chana Santisana. You've done so well. Nairobi is closed. I would have taken you to Java. <laughs> so, um, so and, and, you know, we haven't earned salaries, you know, those things. Salaries have not come in. So I'll buy each of you lunch. Uh, the girls will each get 500 shillings from me. Uh, 500 can give you something. Yes. But the boy deserves 1,000. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. God bless you. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we'll do that immediately after this. Yeah. So I think after this... Uh, the team, lest I forget, just walk to my office, all of you. Uh, if there are not enough chairs, you'll sit on the carpet because uh, I really want to encourage you. This is this uh, Daystar community, this is what makes me strong. When I sit there, you don't know what it means when you're a leader and your people are with you. Yeah. If the spirit in this community was not right, they would not bother doing what they're doing. Yeah. So I really, really appreciate uh, that. And um, I don't know, Peter in Kikamba, how do, you, how do a typical old muse or mama, what do they, do they still call you Peter? Is there a version? Is there a, a, an adulteration of the word, the name Peter? Because my father was called uh, Peter. Actually, my name is just Laban Ayiro. Uh, my mother 
I don't know where she got that, word, that name from. A very old biblical name, Laban. <laughs> <laughs> and there isn't, uh, uh, later on is when I learned there was value in that name. But initially, it was all about this man who liked selling his daughters and getting money, you know. Uh, so, I, as you said, you never know. I was asking, could this, could my mom, maybe the, the boyfriend was called Laban or how? Where, where did she get this name from? But I love the name because I know the lineage of Laban uh, walks to us, walks to uh, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, so, in, in, so, when I was doing uh, CPE standard seven, uh, my father was a driver. He never went to school. But uh, he told me uh, I, I was going to register for the exam. And he said, um, please do me a favor. Put this name in between your names so that later on in life I can associate my desire for you to become great. So Peter is my father. It's not my name. And in uh, Kimaragoli, where I come from, it is Petero. Petero. It is not Peter. He was not known as Peter. In the village, he was called Petero. Uh, I don't know what it is in Kikamba. So I'm, I'm really happy to see you and to know that you are Peter. I want to stress the power of vivid description. The power of vivid description. The power of words. By the way, why are we in this situation in Kenya? I mean, our president is not the one who has brought all this and all those things. Uh, what has been mismanaged is the use of words. Yeah. Just remember that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we, we need to pray for our country. We need to pray for our president. Uh, he's a very lonely person. Because I know what leadership is all about. I know what leadership is all about. And... Um, it is just lack of vivid description on the part of the people he put around him as his disciples. So if you hear the words that uh, the former minister for industry and, and trade was throwing around the country, you know, if you, if you don't want to buy this petrol, then go and drill a well in your home. I had something like that, and I said, you're talking to a nation? Doesn't this nation deserve better? And then, um, if I was cornered and I was asked a euro, how much is this watch? This one. <laughs> <laughs> this watch is a Roma watch. Roma, and this watch is very precious to me. Uh, I was given this watch by the late or the then president of the republic, uh, Daniel Toriticha Rapmoy. Uh, he came to Sunshine. I was the starting principal of that school on Langata Road. And uh, he had just come from Switzerland. And he came to, to me and said, uh, uh, Bona Headmaster, uh, uh, this is a gift for you so that you will always keep time. <laughs> yeah. So, so if, if I was asked, uh, if the press came and asked me how much is this watch, I would use the words I've just used. It's very different. But this watch was bought by a president of the Republic of Kenya. I have tried to buy other watches myself. But I find myself in my, have a, a briefcase where I keep precious things like my certificates, my what. I always find myself ending up with this watch. 
Aroma Watch. And uh, it has never stopped since that time. Yeah, try to see. Uh, that was um, quite some time back, 1997, when I was given this watch. And you know what I'm going to do when I retire from Daystar? And I'm asking God to, you know, lead me into that. Uh, as a leader, you must prepare your mind. Uh, I'm now looking at my grandchildren. Uh, by the way, I have 12. <laughs> you are not clapping for me. Right? <laughs> I have 12 grandchildren. Uh, because I have, uh, God gave me seven children. Uh, one passed on, but she left behind her daughter. So I still have seven. I have 12 grandchildren. And the first grandchild is that uh, Precious Blood Ruta in Form 3. The second one is at Upper Hill, my old school. And the other one is at Kenya High. And they're just going on. I'm feeling, and I'm saying, God, allow me. Allow me to leave so that I can attend their graduation ceremonies. And even their children's graduation ceremonies. So, um, I just wanted to say this. Um, words have meaning. Congregation. And to the wise, a word is enough. Yeah. Just give me the word. That's enough. To the wise, a word is enough. And uh, I really would like to plead with all of us to guard what we say. So, Leo Nchietu na Yumba Yumba. Uh, kisababu ni nini ni hali ya maongezi the words uh, so Deister we, we will always at least as far as I'm your vice chancellor I'll always watch my words and I want to give words that encourage other people even when you have annoyed me I will go to my office and uh, very quickly ask God to give, forgive me uh, because that's what leadership is all about. Uh, like now, uh, you know what's happening in Daystar. In 2019, we were under 3,000. Uh, now we are over 8,000. And uh, this, 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 this coming September, God willing, we might even walk towards 9,000. So if you are leading 9,000 people, you really have to watch your words. You have to watch your words all the time. So thank you very much, uh, uh, Peter, for the message and uh, identifying the skill God has given you is so, so important. I would like us to have, I, I was preaching the same uh, scriptures, those are our theme scriptures in Nairobi and we were talking about when Paul talked about the mystery, the mystery, the mystery and told the Jews no, even those Gentiles are one, are part of us. They are God's people. Sasa wahubiri, nauliza, when you preach that in church, when, when these people come to church, uh, uh, Peter and Zimbi, when these people come to church, to your church, please teach them that even the Gentiles are also people of God. Yeah. So when you are naming a cabinet, you know, just remember those Gentiles, Pia Hao, Ni Watu wa Mungu, Ama Sio Ivo. Please let's stand and share with me this song as we close. Yes. <laughs>
Father, we come before you this morning, truly, wholly submitting ourselves to you, that we need you. We need you in our personal lives. We need you as a Deista community, and above all, our nation, Kenya needs you. Heavenly Father, teach us to realize the power of words and that Lord, in whatever capacity as leaders, let us put on the apron of humility so that you may exalt us in due time. Father, this country needs your grace and we pray for our leader our president that lord you may surround him and subject him to subject himself to the oneness that he must bring to this country Father, may this be a lesson to all of us and even as a Deista community that it is your instruction that leaders submit, leaders serve, leaders become servants so that they can then lead want to thank you for the message of oneness today, for the message of the importance of words or a word. And so, Father, we ask you to 
continue to surround us. We ask you to yoke us unto your words in the scripture. And Lord, may we always strive to do what pleases your heart. So this day in your hands, difficult day for this country, we are praying that our country will remain safe and stable and that you'll give our president uh, that special intuition, that spirit of submitting because we know that it is in that humility that you lift him up and lift the country of Kenya. So continue to be with us for I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So Rev, as you go to Kitui, travel safely. I hope there are no roadblocks on the way. Uh, Kitui town, I've done a lot of work in Kitui, uh, St. Charles, Luanga, St. Anne's, uh, tons of Kitui boys. Uh, is it Tungut? Tungut? This school as you go to St. Charles, Luanga? Yeah. I've done a lot of mentoring in Ukambani. Uh, wonderful people. I never saw the witchcraft, by the way. <laughs> that, uh, I never saw it. Uh, even when I was coming here, people would tell me, you know, you're going to Kambani. Uh, but just uh, Kenyans are wonderful people across the country. So may God bless you. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you. Um, let's greet, let's greet one another with, let's share the peace, greet someone with a greeting of peace, then the peace of the Lord be with you. Uh, let's share in the words of the grace now. Let's share in the words of the grace, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Have a great day, guys, and God bless you.